Finkel, and welcome to Angling Info. Hi, and welcome to Angling Info. You join us on a not so beautiful day today. It's um, a bit overcast and uh, very wet. I'm still going to go ahead and uh, go for the, mess, the method that I've been thinking of today. Um, it's still quite warm, like 15, 16 degrees, so I'm hoping that you know it'll still do all right. It's the start of October, it's pretty much on the limit for this kind of uh, fishing for me. Um, so let's just give it a go. What we're going to do today is paste fishing. I know I've had a couple of requests for this, um, so I'll just go run you through my setup and how I fish it and, and the baits that I use. There's lots of different baits and lots of different paste. To be honest, most are, you know, good enough to use. You know, that's not really the issue. It's how you really mix them up. Um, I, my paste is sloppy. I mean, it, it would not, it will not hold on the hook. It's purely how you set your rig up and, and how we, we put it into the water using the, one of these little pots is um, is how we get it to stay on the hook, which I'll go through next. You can get um, one to one paste, which is what I prefer. Well, it's my favourite, it's one to one. Um, you can get that in natural or in green. Um, but so new baits uh, do a 50 50 method and paste. It's what I fished in my method fishing um, feeder fishing video. But it's also, like a, I said in that video, it's what I use for paste as well. Because it's pretty much just as good as the one to one. So, what we're going to do is, um, I've got it in the green today. Um, it's full of like crushed pellets and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna. There's probably about a fourth of a bag there, but I'm gonna. I'll use all that today. So I'll put all that in there. So just the dry mix. And what we're gonna do is over wet it, and it'll look ridiculous. But once the water is, um, once it's you've left it for for about ten minutes, all the water will dissipate, and then we'll need to add more water to make it even wetter. So what I do first is just get normal uh, lake water and just cover over the top it looks ridiculous and just get your hands in there and there's lots of you know fish attracting oils and stuff that come out of the pellets and you want that to be you know completely binding you want to release them oil so as soon as it starts to to get thicker which it will do just add a bit more water because you really want it to be like runny slurry because it will thicken up really really quickly so You want to make sure you're getting all those drag particles and things into it. So again, you can see it's, it's thickened up, so add a bit more water to it. And you really just want to get that all mixed in before we leave it. And so we'll leave it for that, that 10 minutes. So it's completely... So now as you can see, that that's probably the consistency that we're going to fish with, but within five or ten minutes that's gonna stiffen up so we're gonna have to take it back to that consistency so if you just join me in a couple of minutes I'll wait for that to uh, to harden up and then we'll, uh, we'll finish it off right so we've left it now for 10-15 minutes um, and you can see it's stiff and crumbly and not what we need for um, using on the hook the reason we got it so sloppy is that because it's wet the, the fish is do not suspect that there's anything wrong with it, it's just really soft, so I just think it's a bit of ground bound floor. I'll suck it up and you know, fish is on. So what we're gonna do is really wet it down. So start by putting probably you know a half a cup's worth of uh, water back into it and then just squinch it, squish it up in your hands like like of that kind of motion, just to break it down because originally it's gonna be stiff because you've left it and we can't really give it a, a proper mix until you uh, make it a bit softer. So it's easily took that water up, water in. So probably put another another quarter of a cup in, and now we can put it down and, and give it a little mix. Now it really is um, sloppy, and, and it'll be a lot more sloppy than you think that you you can ever fish with. But once I set it up, you know it's it's doable. I mean, you can fish it stiffer, um, but when you're fishing a waggler, um, if you're fishing at close range, you could probably do it stiffer and just squeeze a bit onto a, a size 12 or you know slightly bigger um, on a waggler. But if you mess it up, if you do it up this wetness, you really need to be on pole because you can't really put it in any other way because it just drops it off. So 
it is quite wet already so it's that kind of consistency and we're just giving it a little touch more and to make it really sloppy like I say it's a bit daunting the first time that you fish with it and you think you know it's not going to work but I assure you if you get get this bit right and you get your peg and your feeding right you'll be in for a really good day there's no point in doing this method where you know you're fishing somewhere where you know it's just small fishing and, and there's not many you know decent stamp fish in there because you know you're not going to you're just going to if you put in the size that we're going to put on we're, we're aiming for a bigger stamper you know three pound or above um, and you just won't catch them and you'll just be plagued with liners so you know it, you need it on a venue that you know you're going to there's, there's bigger stamp fish in there so now we've given it a good mix this is the kind of consistency that we want it looks ridiculous I know but the, the best way to test it is if you get a ball in your hand and you drop it and it flattens like that and you know you've got a perfect consistency and I can still tip it off my hands so that's the consistency you want and then uh, what all you need to do is set up this rig so what I'll do is I'll um, get this rig set up and we'll uh, hopefully catch some fish Hi. now so all the baits are ready to go um, I'm just going to uh, run through the rig with you before I um, do a close up on the uh, on the rig what I'm going to do is just quickly go through how to plumb up um, it's something that I've been asked by a couple of guys um, on, the, on the sort of fishing groups that I'm in and it's something that's very important especially in this method um, but obviously in, in all your fishing if, especially if you're going to fish on the bottom but even if you don't fish the bottom it's nice to see to check the, the depths of where you're fishing so there might be shallower bits and there might be deeper bits and it's, they're the kind of fish holding spots that you need to, to look for when, you, when you're fishing any method really so what we'll do is just a, have a, a quick go through how to plumb up um, and we'll hopefully uh, learn something together so the rig itself I'm just gonna I'll go through in a minute on a close-up but when you plumb up get yourself um, a plummet so it's just basically a weight with a piece of rubber on or a piece of cork on um, bear in mind how thick your line is and how um, heavy your elastic is as to what kind of weight of plummet to go for to be honest this one is a bit big but you can go for um, a smaller one than that as long as it will take the float un under then that's fine so I'm just going to simply put your hook through it and hook it to the bottom and then what we're going to do is, is ship out um, to a few different destinations in front of us and we can see what the depth's like so I'm, I'm looking at fishing on a top a top two plus plus two today but I'm going to feel my peg out to see where there's any flat ground so what I'm doing is I'm just lifting and dropping and when I feel the thud and there's no, and I can see that the, the, the line is taut that shows me how deep it is there so you can obviously see that the floats probably about 45 inches out of there so again it's the same depth and again the same depth and again the same depth out there maybe slightly deeper um, on the, the 2 plus 2 and that's where I'm going to fish so as you can see now any method you need to um, check the depths but I'm going to need to fish so the float so it's plummeted so that the float just sets as if I were ready to fish and, 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 and that I've got shot on because in this method that I'm fishing today I have no shot on whatsoever paste is going to be the thing that cocks the flow and so it's very easy for me to detect when the paste comes off because the flow I can see on the flow so just swing swing your weight in and this the simple bit so you've, you've you've seen where you are so you need to just come down a little bit and this this is vital this you know getting this right will be how you succeed in, in your peg, especially if you're fishing pace. But when you do fish pace fishing, sometimes you get more fish in, in the peg and sometimes you, you land on a bit of your bait. So sometimes you do need to alter your float. If it's going fully under straight away then it just means that they've hollowed away underneath it and you need to make it make it slightly higher up or 
vice versa if you're on top of bait. So you must be aware of that. So you can see we're still a float step over deck. So we need to come back in and make it slightly deeper. And like I say, this this time now that we get that we do this, we're getting this right is is paramount to catching you know a lot of fish. So just need to make that slightly shallower. Check that out and see. It's important once you do get your right depth that you trim off the excess line behind the float because you don't need that much. You see we're just over there. Now what I'm doing is using a marker, there's a bush directly across from me and next to that there's a, a 62 um, peg number and that I'm banging line with that every time and that's that's important that you have a, a marker on the far bank so you can see we're just over depth by probably a bristle so now that I know we're, we're pretty much there That's perfect that now. So as you can see, I'm, I've, I've let all the slack onto the line and we've got the, the float that's just balanced absolutely perfect there. That's, that's how we want to fish it. And then if I lift it slightly, look, you can see that's the weight, taking the weight of it. So it's absolutely dead depth there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna trim the top down so we've got a short line from the tip of the pole to, to the float. We only want about six to eight inches. Um, so I'm gonna do that now and then we'll get back and I'll, go, I'll run you through the rig. All right, right, so we're gonna go through, uh, through the rig. It's a really, really simple rig. We've got 019 power line, reflow power line from Piss Innovations. This one. I've got a frenzied float. It's an FP900. And it's a four gram float. It's um, straight through, so the line goes straight through. It's got a slight side um, eye on there, but it also goes straight through the, the base, through the centre of the float. Real stiff float, really, really strong. It'll take a lot of ammo. And we're running the 019 all the way down to our PR27 size, four, uh, size, six, um, size 12, should I say, hook. And that's it, that is completely it, there is nothing else there, it is just straight through. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, go through how we're going to fish it and it's important to make sure that you get this method you know, down, especially for summer months, so I'm putting it up a bit late but it, it also gives you time to, to think about it you know, for next year. We've got this little cab pot. The, uh, there's a couple of lines on it, they're, they come in all different sizes, you can get Frenzy ones, you can get Preston ones, you can get Guru, you can get anything. And it basically it clips on um, to your pole tip. Now I've slid it slightly down from your pole tip, because what we're going to do is when we put the paste on, we're going to put the ball on top of some pellets, we're going to sit it on top of there, and then it allows us to ship it out and then just tip it into the water and then that allows the ball to go down without the, the, the paste dropping off or anything like that. So let's have a look at how we put the bait on. Right, so let's see how we, we put the bait on. Like I said before, you need to know what kind of fish are in there. You, this will catch bream and it'll catch roach and stuff like that if you use a small enough with a smaller rook. But we're not, we're not going for that today. We're going for, you know, three pound or above, hopefully, carp. In, in, in this one, which is cedar at Oaks today, there's, uh, I think average, it goes up to about six to eight pounds, so hopefully we'll have some of that sample. So we've got a little ball there, um, I'm just trying to think, probably slightly smaller than a ping pong ball, um, and all we've done is flatten it down with a thumbprint in the middle. I'm just going to lay your hook in there, and then squash it in, and just cover the hook. So the line's coming out the top and the hook's buried inside. And then what we do is I just rest that on my knee. And that's, that's what I find the easiest way to do. And then 
to get some pellets, which is uh, four mil sinkers, these, just natural style. All I'm going to do is half fill that pot. All I'll say is when you get more people, in, more um, fish into the peg, start to slightly reduce your pellets um, and it just it basically goes to quicker bites. I've left some more water in, this, in the box. I'm just going to dip this paste in it to give it a bit of extra attraction. So I've just stuck it in the top there so the line's dangling from the pole tip. You just keep, make sure you keep an eye on it, keep it nice and straight. And notice what tight side that your, that your um, line lays over the pole because that's the side that you need to tip it towards. So, mind, I, I fish backwards and there for most people on the pole, so if you ship it out, and I'm doing it to my elbow, and I'm in line with that 62, and I swing it gently to the left, and lay it down, then I go right to the water, and tip in the paste, and the pellets. I'm not imagining to catch something straight away today, you know, it, it's not particularly the best time of year for paste fishing, but I'm hoping to, to do alright. And, and catch something for you. As you can see that the, the, the float's settled but it is a bit high which is, norm, is not, is not um, unusual for the first time that you, that you pop in. And the reason that that is you've, you've got dead depth but sometimes you first paste you don't know how it's going to sit on the bottom so you might need to higher or lower your float so what all we'll do on this, on this next cast is that we'll, higher in, uh, we'll lower the float slightly to make the, the tip sit down because there's always a possibility that there is some fish hanging about there and you've, you've draped it over the top of them. So I usually give it a couple of minutes with the first pot in there um, just to, to establish some bait really. It, it's not a method that this time of year especially is going to go instantly and you're going to start catching instantly. That's not usually the case. It usually takes, you know, could even take up to an hour to get your first bite but it's just about being persistent and feeding that peg off and getting the fish interested in and into your peg. Well hopefully it won't take take us an hour anyway, but um, certainly we can uh, catch some fish hopefully for you today. An important fact also is when um, you do strike the bites, you do have to strike quite firmly um, than normal, you know, a lot harder than you would normal. You know, just not to your left or your right, just straight up and pull, to pull that hook straight through your bait and straight into the fish. Right, so let's get a set, second set in there, see if we can catch some fish. So again, get your pace into a ball, pat it down, squeeze it around the hook. And get your pellets in there. Get your pace in some water. very important that you stay, stay in the same place, the same area where you want them to catch. There's no point in baiting up too large of an area. You want to get those fish just home in on that bait straight away, so we're aiming for the 62 post. Just lift that float back and just let it settle. Right, so we're into the first fish of the day. Seems like a decent size. Um, it's gone careering across the peg. We've got them straight out of the peg. We're only fishing um, 12 Jura elastic, which you may think is quite uh, soft, but for the size of fish in here, it, it's perfect kind of size, really. Don't want anything too heavy on. So all you're doing is keeping that pole tip sunk and uh, it's gone for a nice career around the corner. Um, don't know what size it is yet, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely pulling hard. So just sinking that pole tip, not panicking. We've got 019 power line on here. We've got Jura elastic, which is lovely and soft. So we're just sinking the tip of the pole, waiting for him to come back. And I'm just going to ship down to the top section and get onto the, onto the pole kit. Just 
keeping that pole low. Tip it down. Just let him take the time. So it feels like a decent sized fish, so just let's keep him out of those out of those reeds. You're just sinking the tip until until it changes direction. I've just seen him around the corner. The, the wonder of having a uh, jury elastic on it's a lot softer elastic and can get away with catching bigger fish on softer elastic so we've got them under his under his feet now but we're keeping that pole tip nice and low it's took us probably about 15 minutes to get the peg going which to be honest is not really that bad um considering the time of year in the summer you can it could be uh, you know almost straight away i've just had a glimpse of it it's a lovely looking fish so you know, take your take your time on, on these kind of fish. You know what I mean? You don't want to be ripping the red off. Like I say, it's important to have the balance gear. We've got um, a 12 Jura elastic from Preston, but it's, it stretches for absolutely miles. Now I know that it can reach any part of this um, on off my top section. So you know, it, I'm not worried. That I'm on my top section. It's a strong, it's a strong power kit. I've got one hand on the butt of it running down the inside of my arm I've got one finger to give an extra bit of power and then I've got the pull kit which can just give me an extra bit of power when he's under the net so I haven't seen, I've, I've just seen him underneath in the water and he's a decent stamp fish he's just nearly got his head up there I've just seen him, I think it's a ghost I, th I think that's why it's fighting so well um, but like I say that, that's what kind of fish we're targeting those larger fish on the, um, on the paste and you know obviously this is probably one of the better of the stamp of fish might even be a bit bigger than that actually so it's a lovely lovely looking fish so he's nearly had his head up a couple of times so we'll uh, there we go his head's up he's a, it's a lovely ghosted mirror a lovely fish it is probably getting on for seven pounds i'd say head up and he's in the net. In fact he's not probably a bit bigger than seven. In fact he's a lot bigger than seven. He's probably in fact he's definitely over ten pounds. So that is a fantastic start. It's a fantastic fish to start the uh, start the session on. So I'll just lift him lift him up for camera. A bit um, wild at the moment, so you can see that is an absolutely stunning, stunning fish. So what we'll do is get him in the keep net, and we'll crack on 